Hello friends, welcome to the second practice set of the geometry series. Uh, here in this episode, we will take specifically questions on circles. Let's get started with our first question. So, <clears throat> we have a situation like this, wherein uh, this is a semicircle here with center R, then we have another semicircle with center S, the length of RS is given as 12, and we have to find the length of this overall curve, right? Okay. Now, obviously, we can kind of visualize this as a semicircle to this overall circle, correct? So, this is the overall circle, and this becomes then the semicircle of this smaller circle. Similarly, on the uh, bigger one, we can consider this as a big circle, and this portion is nothing but the semicircle of the bigger circle. So, essentially, what we are talking about is that let's find the circumference of this smaller circle and divide by two or half it because this is the half of the overall circumference. Similarly, let's find the circumference of this bigger circle and then divide by two to get this length. And then we can add both the lengths to find the overall curve, right? Now the catch here is that we do not know this radius, right? All we know is that the length of RS is 12, but we don't know these two lengths. So we don't know the radius of any of the circles, right? Uh, let's say that the radius of this smaller circle is R1. Right? Okay. If this radius is R1, then this would be 12 minus R1 because the overall length is 12. Okay. So let's do the circumference for this one. It will be 2 pi R1 divided by 2 because we are talking about only half the portion of the overall circumference. Plus, the overall circumference would be 2 pi 12 minus R1. Right? because the radius of the bigger circle is 12 minus r1 so 2 pi the radius divide by 2 again because we are only interested in this portion which is the half of the overall circumference let's solve this 2 and 2 get cancelled here so it gets pi r1 plus similarly 2 and 2 get cancelled here as well it becomes 12 pi minus pi r1 pi r1 and minus pi r1 also gets cancelled away and we get 12 pi is the overall length of this arc, right? So that is our answer. Just to quickly reiterate, right? We didn't know the individual radius, but as we just saw, we don't need to know the individual radius because the R ones get cancelled by themselves and we get the value of the length here. Okay, next question. So we have these two circles with the same center O. The circumference of the bigger circle is given to be 36 units, okay, and OC is equal to half of OA. So the smaller radius is half of the bigger radius, correct? So these are the two pieces of information given, the circumference of the overall big circle and the relation between the two radius, the smaller radius and the bigger radius. And when this angle is 80 degrees, we have to find this length of CD we have to find the length of this portion of the arc CD. Okay, so let's get going here. We know the circumference of the bigger circle, so we can find the radius of the bigger circle, right? Once we find the radius of the bigger circle, we can find the radius of the smaller circle because we know the relation between the two radii, right? Once we know the radius of the smaller circle, we can find the circumference of the smaller circle and hence finally find this portion of the length. Let's see. So, Let's say that the overall uh, radius of the bigger circle is r. So 2 pi r is equal to 36 because the circumference is given to be 36. So r will be 36 over 2 pi or 18 over pi, right? So that's the length of the radius of the big circle. Now the radius of the smaller circle will be half of that. So basically half of this which will be 9 over pi, correct? So this is the radius of the smaller circle because it's given that OC is half of OA, correct? Now, when we know the radius of the smaller circle, we can find the circumference of the smaller circle, which will be 2 times pi times R of the smaller circle, which is 9 over pi, which is nothing but 18, correct? So, the circumference of the smaller circle is 18 units, correct? And now, as we have seen in the past, that 
the, the ratio of the circumference to the central angle remains the same. The bigger the circumference, the bigger the central angle, the smaller the length of the arc, the smaller the central angle, right? They, those two go in the same proportion. So essentially what we can write is that the circumference, which is like 18 divided by 360 degrees is equal to, let's say this portion is x divided by 80 degrees, correct? So length of the arc, central angle which it makes, so full length, full angle, partial length, partial angle. And then we can solve this to get the value of x. So 18 times 20 is 360, x is equal to 80 degrees over 20 degrees or 4. So essentially the length of CD or this portion of the arc is 4. Right? Just to quickly reiterate, we had the circumference of the bigger circle, we found the radius of the bigger circle, then we found the radius of the smaller circle, and we found the circumference of the smaller circle, and then we used this ratio to find the length of CD. Let's move to question number three. So we have the circle with center O, and AC is a diameter passing through the center O, and there is a point B on the circle such that AB is equal to OA. So AB is equal to OA, right? So this length is equal to this length, and we have to find the measure of angle ABO, ABO. So we have to find this angle, right? Now there could be several ways of approaching this question, but the easiest and the fastest thing uh, which we can leverage is that the radius, right? If we really see OB and OA are the radius. So they have to be anyways equal, right? So OB is equal to OA, correct? So OB will always be equal to OA, correct? Because they are the radius. And it's given that AB is equal to OA. So essentially, all the three sides are equal, right? It means that it's an equilateral triangle. And if it's an equilateral triangle, this angle would be 60 degrees because every angle in an equilateral triangle is equal, which is 180 divided by 3, which is 60 degrees. So angle ABO is 60 degrees right away. Correct? So there could be other ways of approaching this, but the easiest and the fastest is, you know, we look from a radius perspective and that gives us that triangle ABO is an equilateral triangle, and each of these angles are 60 degrees. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So we have a circle here, and that circle is divided into eight congruent regions. So each of these regions are congruent. They're exactly same in size and shape, right? <clears throat> the area of the circle is 25 pi, right? and we have to find the perimeter of any one region. So let's say that uh, this is our one region, the one which is shaded here. So we have to find the perimeter, essentially this plus this plus this, right? So we have to find the perimeter of one of the regions, correct? Now the area of the circle is 25 pi. We know that the area of circle is given by pi r square. So pi r square is equal to 25 pi, which will give us r is equal to 5, right? Because pi and pi get cancelled, we take the square root on both sides, we get r is equal to 5. So it means that the radius is 5. So the radius of the circle is 5. It means that this length is 5, and this length is also 5, correct? All we got to do is to find this length here, okay? Now, when the radius is 5, the overall circumference we can find out, it's like 2 pi r, so the overall circumference would be 2 pi r, which is 2 times pi times 5, because 5 is the radius, so basically 10 pi. So 10 pi is the full circumference of the circle, correct? And we are talking about 1 8th portion of the circumference, and since each of these regions are congruent, we can very safely say that this length would be 1 8th of the total length. Right? And the total length is the circumference. So this length would be 10 pi divided by 8. 1 eighth of 10 pi, right? Which is nothing but let's say 5 over 4 pi. So this is the length of this portion. Uh, this length is anyways 5 because that's the radius. This is also 5. So 5 plus 5 
is 10. So 10 plus 5 over 4 pi. So the overall perimeter would be 10 plus 5 over 4 pi. So this is the overall perimeter of one of the regions in this case. Now question number five. So we have a circle with center O and uh, this angle here is 100, 100 degrees, okay? And we have to find that what fraction of the circle area, what fraction of the overall area is shaded, right? So essentially, we have to find the ratio of the shaded area to the total area, correct? That's how we can find that how much fraction is shaded, correct? For example, if you have 10 apples and we, have, we eat three apples, then how many apples what fraction of the apples we have eaten, it's like three over 10. In the same way, when somebody is asking us what fraction of the circle area is shaded, essentially, we they are asking is the ratio of the shaded area to the total area, correct? This will give you what fraction of the total area is shaded, right? Now, we have seen in the past, we have learned in the past that like the circumference, even the area of the circle go in the same proportion as the central angle, right? So the full area of the circle uh, divided by the full angle, central angle, which is 360 degrees, is equal to the partial area of the circle divided by the partial central angle, right? So they go in the same proportion, just like we saw uh, in the previous questions for circumference, right? So essentially what I'm saying is that, let's say that the shaded area, we call it by SA, and the total area, we call it by TA, correct? Let's say we call it by SA and TA, okay? So SA, the shaded area, right, divided by the central angle which this area is forming, which is 100 degrees here, is equal to the total area divided by the total central angle, which will be 360 degrees, right? So we know this. We know this right away. And if we see, we are actually required to find the ratio of uh, shaded area to the total area, so basically we can do cross multiplication and we get 360 degrees uh, shaded area is equal to 100 degrees total area. We divide by total area here, we divide by total area here, and we divide by 360 degrees here, and we divide by 360 degrees here, right? Essentially, we are trying to get to the ratio of shaded area to the total area, which is coming out to be nothing but 100 over 360 degrees which is nothing but 10 over 36, or we can simplify it to uh, 5 over 18, correct? So the ratio of the shaded area to the total area is 5 over 15, or in other words, 5 15th of the total area is shaded, right? So just to quickly reiterate, we are doing nothing new here. We are again using the same concept that the area and the central angle they go in the same proportion, just like the circumference. Hey folks, hopefully you got a good idea in terms of the typical uh, circles related geometry questions. Uh, keep practicing. In case of any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info.mathleads at gmail.com. See you in the next session.